Hi guys, this is Monica from Huckleberry Mountain Botanical School of Herbalism and as promised I am here to uh, talk about making your own bitters. So I am going to wait a few minutes or a couple minutes at least and hope that um, some more people will show up because it's much easier to talk to people than it is to just talk to a camera. Um, so let me talk just a little bit about why you would want to have bitters, why you want to be taking bitters, why are we even making bitters, and what are bitters? Um, bitters are one of those herbal actions that helps your digestion. Hi, Lindy, <laughs> my regular viewer. Um, so what the beauty of bitters, though, is that they begin to act immediately. So as soon as you put them in your mouth, it stimulates your salivary glands. And in your saliva are enzymes, which begin the breakdown process. So as soon as the bitters hit your mouth, you salivate <clears throat> and you start stimulating stomach secretions, your hydrochloric acid and the enzymes that are in your stomach. The other thing it acts on is your liver and your gallbladder and even your pancreas. So, you know, all of these enzymes and hormones and, um, and acids that are necessary for actual good digestion as it moves through your system. It also stimulates peristalsis, which is the movement of your food and whatever it's called at the moment, bolus or chyme or fecal matter as it moves through your digestive tract. And so it stimulates that as well. There are a lot of people out there that don't feel that hungry feeling, but they eat anyway because they, they just go, oh, I don't really feel like anything's going to digest that much, but it's time to eat, and so I'm going to eat. And if you're the type of person that has a hard time getting that hungry feeling, or when you eat, you feel like things are sitting in your stomach rather than moving through, then adding bitters would be a really, really good um, practice for you. Other ways you can add bitters besides what we're gonna do today is to eat a salad that has some bitters in it, like dandelion greens. That's a really easy and simple way to incorporate bitters into your day. Um, it's a little harder if you're dealing with children that have some digestive issues and you're trying to help stimulate um, their digestion because a lot of kids will avoid that bitter taste. However, if you start out a little more mild in the bitters and then increase it incrementally over time, it, they can you know, really get used to the bitter flavor. Also, adding bitters to your life decreases your tolerance or your cravings of sugar. So you think about it, if we are eating foods that are more on the bitter side, then we are not going to be really drawn toward things that are sweet. It actually will taste too sweet. So if you're dealing, if you're, if you're dealing with some sugar cravings or you're trying to reduce your sugar intake, adding bitters to your um, to your diet so either before you eat you know the salads or whatever um, it would actually help to decrease your sugar okay so let's get started with what 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 we're doing today is so so basic so first of all um, all I have is Lindy but if you're gonna watch this on replay how many of you have made your own bitters at home like uh, you know this type of bitters and if you have, put yes. Um, and then I'm gonna talk to you, I know that if any of my students watch this, they all made bitters on Saturday, and that, it's always just a fun project to do. I, <clears throat> I think one of the things that um, making herbal preparations does, especially if you can get a group of people together, is just creates, I don't know, camaraderie and friendship and, and a shared interest that, um, that creates sort of a bond. And I see that with my herbal students that we're all getting to know each other a lot better and um, having this shared interest kind of increases our desire to get to know each other a little more. So I highly suggest if you want to make some bitters, you know, get the ingredients you need and invite some friends over and make them together. So I'm going to just show you a few bitter herbs that go from kind of that heavy, heavy, like really strong bitter flavor all the way down to mild. And like I said, if you are not used to having bitters, start mild and then increase your bitters over time. So starting with the strongest, gentian root and, and wormwood are pretty strong bitters. Those are intense. 
And today I'm going to be straining my wormwood um, tincture, which is just wormwood and, and vodka. So basically it's half of this recipe to show you how to strain your stuff after it's done. But that, I just tasted it earlier and it's like, wow, so intense. It is really, it's just that true bitter. There's no other flavor to it. It's just bitter. And gentian root is the same way. So if you're looking for a heavy bitter, you can do that. Um, let's see, burdock root and dandelion root are kind of two go-tos if you're looking for bitters. Those are really, really good ones, for, especially even for beginners. Then you get into the more mild things like chamomile or yarrow, and those are quite mild. And what you could do if you wanted to slowly increase your tolerance is to start with chamomile and then move up to yarrow, and then um, from there add something a little stronger, like say dandelion root mixed with chamomile. And then you can even increase to like wormwood or gentian root and um, add some my, more mild ones and slowly just increase the amount of the really strong bitters that you do over time. Another really good one is organ grape root. And, and you don't have to use the root, you can use the, the limbs. So cutting the limbs, pulling back that, that outer bark and grabbing that bright, bright yellow. That's the part you want. You don't want the white pithy stuff, you want that bright yellow root color. And I do have one of those too, but um, I didn't get that one out. <clears throat> and then with these bitters, you have, you have a choice of I'm giving you so many choices, you guys. You have the choice of either staying strictly bitter, like just straight on, I want just bitter, or combining it with aromatics. Now, depending on what aromatic herb you choose, and by aromatic, I mean ones that have a lot of essential oil, um, and they're, they're warming and stimulating, um, I have one that's mint, and mint is a really good after dinner as well. So. I can take my bitter before and afterwards I can have my um, bitter mint combo, sort of an after dinner, help me to digest and help my stomach to stay calm. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Today though, I'm going to be making one that has star anise, cinnamon, cardamom, and ginger. And so I'll be making that real quick. So our bitter portion first, I wanna show you that. I'm going to, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a burdock dandelion root. And we're gonna start out with four tablespoons, um, which also, by the way, is a quarter cup, so you can do either one. And I've got a quarter cup. Well, I guess I should've grabbed my two tablespoons. But anyway, I'll put half of my uh, dandelion, half of my burdock, set them in there, and I'm literally just going to fill the jar. If you have, um, Everclear, that's perfectly fine because one of the things you can do as well is add a sugar syrup um, after they're done and you've mixed them together, especially if you're going to make it into a cocktail, which is extremely popular. You look at almost all the recipes for things like martinis and they generally will have bitters in them. So if you want to make something like that, that allows you to get um, a fun drink as well as your bitters, then you can um, do that. And the best and easiest way to do that is make the bitters, add your sugar syrup, and then um, add, you know, mix in some sparkling water or something like that, or follow uh, a recipe for a drink. It feels like I'm always talking about drinks. I don't, I don't know why. Okay, so I'm just gonna add my vodka. I should have taken the top off this one. I'm gonna fill it to almost the top, but not quite. And you can use a, um, a bigger jar if you want, and still use the same amount of bitter because it will be sitting in here for a long time. And so every single one of them, you'll put the lid on. One of my students just showed me a really awesome thing from Amazon. I think I'm gonna find it and put it in the comments. It's like this little rubber seal thing that you can put under regular lids that keeps things from leaking because that is one of the issues that we have when we have to shake and you do have to shake. You're gonna shake this every day for three weeks before you strain it. Um, and if you see that you know it needs more vodka, it shouldn't, but if it does, then you can put more in there. All right, now we're gonna do the um, aromatic side. And today I am using some cinnamon chips. I just did this, you know, chip these recently. I don't suggest breaking down your cinnamon um, right away or, and then I, 
at once and then using it slowly over time, it really does lose a lot of its flavor and, um, and, the, and the good stuff that's in it. So, all right, so this is star anise. And when I'm using star anise, I'm gonna break this up. These little star pieces come off really, really easy. So I'm just gonna break it up and put it in here. You know, if you don't break things up, you could break it up even smaller, but um, you really, it's not really necessary. Just kind of breaking them up <clears throat> here. And then I'm gonna do some cardamom. These cardamom pops, these, these, are, these are the green ones. I'm just gonna break them up slightly here. See, this is the fun part of making herbs. You get to do, you get to crush. You can get all of your aggression in, into your your um, your little mortar or pestle. All right, and the last thing I'm going to do is ginger, and I'm actually doing fresh. Part of the reason why is because uh, my students made this, and um, all my dried ginger is almost gone. But also because it it really does bring in a nice flavor. Tip: the easiest way to peel ginger is with a spoon. It just peels right off. And if it is organic ginger, keep these um, peels. This is another tip that one of my students gave because I've always made my uh, ginger tinctures just out of ginger. And she said, oh, if you, if you have organic ginger, just use the ginger peels. And so sure enough, I've been doing that ever since. And it makes the most wonderful tasting ginger tincture. And um, you can add sugar to it. And again, make it into an alcoholic beverage. Okay, you don't have to sit around drinking um, alcohol. That will not be very good for your liver. But, but, you know, as a summer spritzer or something like that, that's good. Seriously, I think I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's just that every single one of these can be made into that um, if you want to. Now, I chopped it down. I'm adding it in. And you can put as much or little in there as you want. I'm going about a third of the way up. You can go halfway up, but I would not go any farther than that because as the dried herbs get the um, vodka in it, they're, they're going to start expanding and then you'll end up with way too much herb and, and not enough space to shake and not enough um, vodka to use. So I'm, I'm not gonna pour the vodka in there, but just know that I'm going almost to the top, not all the way, almost, so I have enough space to shake. And again, you're gonna shake it every day for three weeks. Then when three weeks is up, you're going to strain. Now, this is the thing I use to strain. It's a potato ricer. <laughs> yes, another alcoholic beverage. I know, I don't know. It's like obsessive. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's going on over here and I don't need to drink that much. Um, certainly not making you know mixed drinks in my kitchen, but anyway, it, this is the easiest way. And what I did is I lined the bottom with a, um, a filter. You could use really any kind of muslin or anything like that and just pour it in, allow it to go through. And the only thing, the only reason why I love this is because it lets me squeeze every last bit of um, the alcohol out of the plant material. Now, if I had um, a press, I would be using that. But, you know, this is, this is something about herbalism too that I, I always try to get across to people is you don't have to have really expensive equipment. This is not expensive and it works really, really well. And yes, it's cool and fun to have all like the, the little things that, I don't know, that, that all the tools that we could have, but we don't, we don't really need them. And so if you look to see what you have in the kitchen, look to see what you can find at secondhand stores. Um, the only thing I would warn you against is getting jars that you're going to be heating from secondhand stores because those can only be heated a certain amount of times before they'll pop. And if you've got you know, expensive oil or the last bit of your herbs in there and you heat it up and, and it pops, you've lost it all. Okay, so, do, so for combination, I'm actually just gonna go for it and usually, it's about a four to one. Okay, four parts bitter to one part aromatic, but you can make it the total opposite direction and again, move up to a higher bitter if you want. So that's my wormwood, and this is gonna be an interesting combination because I've got my wormwood 
that was really messy, and mint. So we're gonna get that kind of aromatic, like, you know, hit me in the nose and, and calm, it's calming to the stomach, along with that um, bitter flavor. Now, as far as how much should you take, a couple of drops is all it takes. It really doesn't take a lot, especially if you've made a strong, a strong bitter. I'm just gonna try it really quick. Oh yeah, that's gonna get things moving. Huh. Okay, so, no, it's really quite tasty now. I'm not tasting the mint. So anyway, after three weeks uh, of shaking these things daily, keep them somewhere you know close to you but out of the sun and maybe in a cupboard or something in your kitchen and just, um, you know, just shake them up every day. Yeah, the mint was really good. I think you'll like it, Lindy. Lindy likes to use bitters. She needs to use bitters. Um, and then after three weeks, strain, and then mix how you like. And like I said, if you want to add some sweetener, go ahead. If you want to add a sugar syrup, it's one cup of sugar to one cup of water. Just um, heat it up and let the sugar melt. You can use brown sugar, or you can use white sugar, or you can use coconut sugar, whatever kind of you know sugar your family uses. Or you can do um, a honey with a little bit of water mixture, or you can do even um, maple syrup or things like that. So, you know, get creative. This is, this should be really fun. And it, and there is no, like, there's no wrong way to do it. Okay. So don't feel like, well, I, I've never done it before. It doesn't matter. You can't mess it up. You'll, you'll just have, um, a, a bitter that you can, you know, have and just not like it as much. It doesn't matter. It's a couple of drops. And if you put it in a spray bottle, two or three sprays, and, and that's more than enough to get everything going and get the benefits of that. So if you have any questions, let me know. And if you haven't liked my page, Huckleberry Mountain Botanicals on Facebook, please go do that now. I also have a YouTube channel that I post all of these on and occasionally other things as well. And uh, for the PDF that goes with this live, join my free herbal content course. Just um, I'll put the link in there and you can go over there and join and um, access the recipe. Also get on my mailing list so that you can get any tips or recipes or anything like that that I put out for my subscribers, okay? I will see you next Tuesday when I go live again and we'll be talking about cultivating another herb. Until next time, health and joy.